This is my Shimano GRX equipped a Canyon Grizzle bike packing gravel racing bike that I'm using in the further east 400 mile self supported race. Now you can watch a full video of that adventure over on GCN but here and now we're going to go through the bike and the equipment that I'm taking with me. Starting with the frame, a Canyon Grizzle. So this was launched in spring 2021 and it's at the rowdy end of the gravel spectrum. So there's tire clearance here for up to 50 millimeters wide. I'm going for 45 millimeters to get as much comfort as I can through the rough stuff but without giving too much away on tarmac. Now I say rowdy, it's a sturdily built bike, although the frame weighs in at just 950 grams. It's designed, they say, for bike packing, so you can see it's covered in bosses and things to attach paraphernalia to. I'm going to try and be as stripped back as I can, although someone has just told me that he thinks I'm taking too much with me. So anyway, we'll come on to that a little bit later on. Uh, the geometry of this bike is still quite aggressive which is great because it means that whilst it's still stable the rear end's a little bit longer the front isn't so slack that you need to give the bike five minutes notice if you want to go around a corner it still feels nimble and fast which is a big tick in my book now it's got Shimano GRX on there. I've got the top of the range DI2 version. You can see I've set it up two by, so I've got an 11 to 34 cassette at the back, and I've also got 48 31 chain rings. Now, I'm not expecting there to be a huge amount of climbing, nor indeed many steep, sharp hills here, but I do have the range if needed. But the most important thing is that 11 to 34 cassette is gonna give me a nice opportunity to fine tune my cadence on the many faster, flatter sections that I'm expecting. So uh, I can imagine if I'm battering into a headwind with 300 miles already under my belt, that if I can't find the optimum cadence, that's probably going to make me throw my toys out of the pram. Wheels are also Shimano GRX, and as mentioned, I've got 45 millimeter wide tires around them. They're the Pirelli Cinturato Gravel H's. So those are for hard pack conditions. There's still a little bit of tread on there. There's a bit of a file tread. So if I do encounter any muddy patches, I'll be able to get through no problem. Now the rims themselves are made out of aluminium so that hopefully will mean there's a bit of extra comfort and compliance from them which could well be a very important thing indeed. Speaking of compliance, the bike comes as standard with Canyon's VCLS seat post which is effectively like a carbon leaf spring so you've got two halves to the post and then they're bolted together at the bottom inside the frame and then also at the top at the seat clamp and it allows the, the post to move effectively up to 20 millimeters, which, uh, which is pretty amazing really. And um, it's super effective, I've got to say. On top of that, I've got a pro stealth off-road specific saddle as well. So as you can see, that's quite a short nose seat. There's also a cutout as well. So that's when I'm using my clip-on aero bars. Oh yes, I can get nice and comfy as well. Now these are ones that we found at the very bottom of the GCN parts bin. Um, I confess I've never ever spent any time on aero bars like this before, but I've been told 100% that they are pretty much essential for this kind of thing. Not just for getting more aero, although that is a major advantage, but actually just taking a bit of pressure off your hands and your wrists and making life a little bit more comfortable. So they're on there because I've been told that I need them. Um, I'll report back later, let you know whether there's any good. Now those clip-ons are bolted on to Kenya's gravel handlebar. It's a little bit flared, 440 millimeters wide, so wider than you might normally run on your road bike, but great when you get in off-road as well. Now, last point to note on the bike, uh, you can see that that Pro Discover frame bag takes up or gives me loads of storage effectively under the top tube, but it does mean that it sits close to my water bottles. So I've fitted some Topeak sideways entry bottle cages. I nicked them from the GMBN guys. Uh, they always use them in their full suspension mountain bikes, but they're absolutely perfect in this particular situation. Now then, let's get on to some of the other stuff. As you can see, I've got Pro's Discover bags on here. That's where I'm keeping all of my stuff. I'm not going for a handlebar bag. 
effectively I don't think I need to use one for the storage and I'm also not choosing to use one because because they're not very aerodynamic are they let's face it and that is actually going to make a difference or so I think at this point so uh, I've got the frame bag okay uh, those are not organic almonds uh, that is Enovit uh, energy drink in powder form more uber bars gluten free pitters that's my uh, Castelli ridiculously lightweight waterproof uh, I've got toolkit in here so I've got multi-tool um, I've actually brought a punch of a packet would you believe it uh, pump I've got two tubes I've got a chain tool and a spare quick link as well Aha! So a Muckoff BAM canister. So basically that's like a foam. So if you get a puncture and the sealant in the tires won't seal it, then that hopefully will. Um, a big battery pack, so that's my phone. You like this. Cable ties. Oh yeah. To peak. The top tube bag there, I've got uh, hand sanitizer, Uber bars. That's my charger for my Wahoo. Pen knife. Oh yeah, you never know when that'll come in handy. GoPro batteries, uh, and then um, headphones, which I would never, ever, ever, ever normally write with headphones. But I'm thinking that um, entertainment might be needed above and beyond just the simple act of pedaling. So that's what they're there for. And then in the seat pack, I've got gilet, puffer jacket, leg warmers, no, arm warmers. Oh, I bought a spare undervest. Don't know why. Just thought, thought I might not like freshen up in the morning. Uh, gloves and then a hat. Basically, I've, I've prepared for the Arctic. Ta-da! This is just the ultimate. It's a Rab Mythic 600. It's basically just, if it gets to minus 10, then I'm absolutely sorted. So, um, might be overkill. But then, what's the point in buying a less good sleeping bag when you've already got one that's really nice? That's my thinking. It's 15 litres and it's stuffed to capacity. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, now, I mentioned the Wahoo. I've got the Element Bolt going on there. I've also, um, I'm using a K-Edge mount and then I've got a GoPro underneath so I can record stuff for you guys. Lastly, probably of equal importance to the Wahoo for navigation are the lights that I'm running. So I've got an Exposure Strata SB front light, which is an unbelievable piece of kit. So it can pump out 1500 lumens. It's designed specifically for road riders, but it's gonna be properly good for gravel as well. Now, as you can see, it's quite a large light, partly to get that 1500 lumens out, but also the built-in battery is epic so you can get up to 36 hours of runtime out of this on a high beam obviously at 1500 lumens it's going to be much less it's about two hours but on low which is what i'm going to be running it out i can easily get me through the night and if need be into the next night as well so uh, so that's great and i've also got their rear light as well going on too so that is a very quick run through of the equipment that i'm using for further east as i said make sure you do check out the full video over on gcn if you're interested and please give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it